currently I am thinking about, or at least trying to get more established in social media um, as being an influencer. So we'll see how it goes for me. Um, I'm very new at this, but I do have a very big platform and, and let's see um, what I do with it. When I found this, I was like, oh, for once I'm not yappy, yappy, yapping out my, I'm actually making sense. I actually knew it. Hey guys, it's Briar of Briar Chats and this is a safe space for yappers. Now I have observed something on the media of socials that I find bizarre. It is a favorite word of mine, but this to me is truly bizarre. And that is the pipeline that I have seen a couple of people, <laughs> girly pops if you will, take where they have gone from inmate to influencer. Yes, I am very proud of the title. Thank you. Thank you. I, I did make it myself. To me, this is just something that I can't quite shake. Like I can't quite let it go. And so when I can't let something go, I simply have to yap about it with you guys. So if you guys wanted to chat about Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Anna Dalvey and how they have made the strange but all very real and successful transition from inmate to influencer yeah stick around because we're going to get into it now i kind of wanted to talk about anna first and then we'll get into gypsy second and then we'll kind of talk about the general pipeline and like the bigger picture of it all at the end if that's okay with you guys because whilst yes both of them have gone from inmate to influencer i think they have done it in different ways and for that reason i think it's kind of worthwhile like going through each of their journeys to kind of see where they end up and I wanted to start with Anna first because strangely enough considering she is a convicted con artist I feel like she is almost being a bit more honest about the whole situation because to me Anna is trying to be who she was always trying to be which is a rich socialite celebrity so if you don't know the TLDR of Anna Delvey. She is known as Anna Delvey and is a convicted con artist. She pretended to be a socialite in the 2010s and basically scammed a bunch of rich people. She was arrested in 2017 and convicted in 2019 and then she was released into house arrest in 2022. If you can believe it, Anna Delvey was released two years ago basically, October 5th, 2022. Time is but a construct. And what happened whilst she was in prison was incredibly interesting because you see a little a little company called Netflix mm -hmm, and just like a small underground actress known as Julia Garner made a nine episode Netflix series called Inventing Anna which really blew her up into the mainstream and pop culture and I feel like that happened for a lot of different reasons. I feel like her as a character and a person was very intriguing and the actress in played her incredibly incredibly well and I think a lot of people feel like she was very accurately played by the actress. We will get into it more later but interestingly she was paid for this Netflix series but she didn't quite get to keep the money we'll get into it that's a little teaser for later don't even worry about it but obviously what I wanted to focus on more was the after being released and being put on house arrest but I feel like one of the main things that is incredibly important to note about this pipeline and about the success of this pipeline is having a Netflix show or some sort of mini series that tells your story and puts you into the mainstream of pop culture because when the time comes to your release if you have done a crime where you're not going to be in prison for life people are going to follow it with interest people are going to follow you with interest and I feel like that is what both Anna and Gypsy knew would happen and they absolutely made the most of it. So like I said, Anna was released two years ago now, if you can believe it, but she was put on house arrest. And I feel like this only added to the plot of the situation because she has a huge social media following. She has 1.1 million followers on Instagram and 176 thousand followers on TikTok. I feel like Anna is not trying to be an influencer. Like we're not going to see
see her on Tripping with Tart. Imagine if Anna Delvey went on a Tripping with Tart trip. That'd be bananas. But I don't think that that is what she's aiming for. Because you can see in the interviews that she's done and the people that she has tried to align with, she's definitely focusing on the celebrity side of the situation. Because she focused on trying to connect with people like Julia Fox and Paris Hilton and creating those type of celebrity connections. She even did the most influencer thing you could ever imagine which is make an NFT. I feel like shit coins and NFTs is kind of the influencer. You simply got to do it. If you want to be a successful influencer, you either got to promote a shit coin or NFTs. And she chose some NFTs. That was actually before she came out of jail in June of 2022. I don't really understand what an NFT is. Like I know it stands for non-fungible token, but don't ask me to explain it beyond that. But obviously what she did recently by going on Dancing with the Stars, to me, is what screams like I want to be a celeb influencer socialite because that's what darling it's what I do it's what I live for that is what celebrities do sometimes I believe and she was on Dancing with the Stars she was already voted off but she made her exit very memeable I guess you could say and we can even watch that now because because well I'll just let the interview speak for itself. What are you going to take away from this competition? Nothing. (laughs) And I feel like that's a pretty accurate representation of her personality on social media. Like she is what I would consider to be a pot stirrer. She likes to post things that are incredibly on the nose. And I wanted to show you a couple of those TikToks right here, right now. If you didn't quite hear the lyrics, or maybe I had to cut it out because copyright is always out to get me. Yeah, me specifically. It only attacks me, nobody else. It's my problem, obviously. It said, everybody knows I'm a good girl officer. And she's obviously in her Dancing with the Stars get up, drumming up some hype, drumming up some chatter, 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 and being incredibly on the nose with the content because obviously she's wearing her, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know what they call it, the ankle monitor? house arrest bracelet considering how tiny air tags are it feels quite extreme that that thing is so big but anyway and the comments i feel like are a reflection of how people feel about her it's very very mixed like there's some people that's like i don't watch dancing with the stars but of course i'm gonna vote for you icon behavior and then obviously a lot of people being like i feel so bad for her dance partner Ezra. Honestly, she probably did get some likes, clicks, and engagement for the show. Like, I think it was an an incredibly clever pull for Dancing with the Stars and for Anna herself, even though she got eliminated what seems to be quite quickly. But yeah, I thought we could just watch a couple more of her TikTok content so you guys can get a vibe of the kind of influencer persona she's trying to create. You're just posting that for attention. Uh, yeah, obviously, bitch. You're friends with Anna Delvey. Where do you stand on prison reform? Free Anna Delvey, though. But she, didn't she do the things? Do what? Why do you dress like that? Like? Like that. What are you wearing? You look poor. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. The impression she is trying to give is very on the nose, but it is kind of influency. But obviously, like, she will kind of poke fun at herself in the situation. I feel like she is very aware of how she's perceived and she kind of knows what will and will not get attention. And she's going to do the things that get her attention. One thing that I will say is both her and Gypsy have kind of scrubbed previous posts and have very like only their very most recent posts available on their socials which I find interesting also because I did kind of 
in this video want to start from when they were released and like show the progression but they literally don't want me to they literally only want me to react and show you guys what they're posting now they don't want me to go back two years one thing i also want to point out as well that i feel like is part of this pipeline is the glow up right because i feel like when you're in prison obviously you don't have access to beauty obviously so you will look better once you are out of prison you will have access to more you know you'll be able to get your hair done professionally you'll be able to get more makeup things like that however i do feel like anna and gypsy have both had what i would consider to be more than like what you and i would get per se or like just what you know your everyday gal and pal may have because i feel like if you look at clips of anna now versus anna in prison she looks incredibly different and i do also wonder if maybe that's why their stuff is only showing them more new content because it's kind of that glowing up selves but yeah so that is her social medias another thing i kind of did want to show you guys is this very unusual interview that she did with variety around a year ago which is picking her house arrest favorites so we're not going to watch the whole thing. I mean, it's pretty short, but I did just want to show you like a couple of clips just so you can get a vibe once again. In reality, it's more likely a gambit to circumvent the sound of Sam Law, which was designed to prevent criminals from profiting of the publicity of their crimes. He doesn't really explain how is it that my podcast is circumventing the sound of Sam Law. He like already assumes I'm just scamming and conning and just like need to trick my way into anything. And it's like, I can't, yeah, I paid my restitution in full, so. I don't need to. <laughs> the rooftop or my stove with a sculpture on it. <laughs> my favorite daily ritual would be my skincare routine. I find it very relaxing. After I take the shower, I just put on all my serums. Like I'm big on skincare and I've been missing skincare a lot uh, while I was in jail. <laughs> I use a lot of cocoa butter. You do get like some products there, but they're very basic. So it was like a detox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this interview makes you guys feel the same but I'm like there's something so strange about Variety interviewing her yes he thinks it's strange too I think it's really odd like what kind of a world do we exist in where Variety is like so what's your favorite like rituals oh ooh, like what was your skincare routine in jail this is what i mean by the pipeline like we're treating someone that could be an advocate and share their story we're treating them like an influencer and honestly this is what i hope that i am showing you guys in this video is like instead of giving them a platform to be advocates or to show their growth or what they've learned or their experiences we're treating them like influencers we're treating these people as if they became famous because we wanted to know what moisturizer they were using like their beauty hacks like no this person became famous or infamous because of a netflix series that was incredibly fascinating about this person's real life and the real crimes they committed but what i think this proves is anna has been pretty successful at regaining her socialite status but her infamy has almost given her the ability to do it legitimately i'm not saying she's not conning people anymore but now that she is able to do dancing with the stars interviews interviews with variety she is now actually able to get paid to become the socialite that she always dreamed of being she literally in september last year whilst under house arrest hosted a new york city fashion week party on the roof of her apartment like she is living the life that she wanted to but if anything her arrest and the netflix series has helped her do it more legitimately question mark and i feel like that's why i say i think anna is being more honest because i don't think that she's pretending like she's changed she may have said something but i can't see her being like 
no, I'm not like that anymore. Like I'm a good person now. or I don't con people anymore. Tee hee. If anything, I've seen the opposite. I'll actually play you guys as the last thing that we watch of hers, a promo that she did with a reality game show. But to me, the presence that she's creating is in keeping with this kind of manipulative con artisty influence. She's not pretending that she's some sort of sweetie peedy sweetie pie like she's to me kind of being quite overt in the sense that she is who she is but I did want to kind of end on this promo that she did for this show because I found it bizarre hey guys apologies mascaraless editing me here when I went to go get the clip for this promo I saw that Anna has unarchived her all her old posts so Past me was not a liar, like filming me was not lying, it's just she had archived a lot of her old posts. They are now back. Guess what baby, they are back. She has like 342 posts now. So they're all very like artsy and of her like pre-prison situation. <laughs> I did want to make a correction before we watch this final clip that I wasn't fibbing, it was just that at the time she had archived like before this promo video, there was barely any posts. Now there are all of her old posts back. Interesting as to why, I'm not sure as to why. Speculate in the comments, sound off in the comments, your speculations as to why. But anyway, without further ado, here's that promo clip. Gaslighting can be a great way to get ahead. Not that I've ever done it, of course. I want people to think I'm Sharina. I think that might help me remain anonymous. You want to be quick and confident. This might be my only chance to take her out of the game, so gotta take it while it's there. It's like a magic trick. If you go too slowly, they're going to see how it's done. I think anonymous mode is gonna spice up. I'm waiting to see. He's gonna spice up. I'm waiting to see who switches up the energy in anonymous mode. Is it emotionally manipulative? Of course. I need to pull out my Midwestern charm. That way they feel like there's no way they could put me at risk. Well, you can't just convince them otherwise after you've taken home the prize money. Could be my death sentence. No risk, no reward. USA's The Anonymous. The game begins Monday at 11. Do you guys see what I mean though? And this top comment is so once again bizarre to me. It's like they say she is so cool and interesting but boy does she have a very shady and kind of hard to trust energy about her. It's almost like she conned people that thought they were her friends out of tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of doll hairs. Maybe that's the energy that you're picking up on but anyway, she is clearly making being a con artist and that side of her personality, I guess, part of her brand. And even that, she's figured out how to make it work for her. And I hope that what I've shown of her is this kind of brand that she's created for herself. But anyway, let's move on to Gypsy Rose. Now, I may have to self-censor myself a little bit with this one because Gypsy Rose did uh, get convicted of second degree of her mum. Mm -hmm. I assume that everyone knows the Gypsy Rose story, but if you didn't, the super, super quick, 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 quick story, I can't be quick, let's be honest. But the super duper quick, 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 quick story is her mum, Dee Dee Blanchard, uh, basically suffered of Munchausen's, but it wasn't of herself, it was onto Gypsy, which is known as Munchausen's by proxy. So Dee Dee convinced Gypsy throughout her life that she was sick when she was not. They traveled around conning people. After Hurricane Katrina, they got given a house. They were recipients of things from Make-A-Wish. Like they got given a lot of stuff because of her mom's both conning and pretending of Gypsy being sick. Obviously, this led Gypsy to grow up under very extreme circumstances. And I think People don't want to take away these very real experiences from her because all of these things did still happen. However, what this led to was Gypsy deciding with her boyfriend at the time that they were going to her mom so that they could escape and so that she could run away. And so she convinced her boyfriend, who is now still in prison, it's true, for the 
of her mum, Gypsy actually pled guilty to second degree murder and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Now, Gypsy was sentenced in 2015 and in 2019, a crime drama series called The Act came out. Once again, we had a true crime miniseries with an incredible actress, uh, Joey King actually played Gypsy Rose. I think that personally to me, this is the best role that Joey King has done. The commitment that she had and the way that she portrayed Gypsy to me was very impressive. And I know that there was some criticism around the story, but I think overall the miniseries was received very well and once again made Gypsy a very prominent person in the media and made people very interested in what would happen once she was released because like I said she got a 10 year sentence and the act came out I guess it would have been four years into her sentence however Gypsy was actually released eight years into her sentence which was December 28th 2023 so that also was nearly a year ago look I'm not happy about how fast time is moving either but I can't lie to you guys and say that December 2023 was two weeks ago just because it feels like it was two weeks ago since then Gypsy has been booked and busy. She came out and like hit the ground running. There was a huge whirlwind about the relationship that she was in when she left prison. Obviously, if you kept up, you know that relationship is no longer. She is currently 20 something weeks pregnant to a different guy. And she also did a lifetime show called Life After Lockup, which did include her ex-husband and I think it raised a lot of eyebrows around their relationship and the whole thing it's kind of confusing because there's the guy that she's with now Ken but she also had dated him previously and then Ryan is the ex-husband who she married while she was still in prison I'm pretty sure it's kind of messy like let's be honest like it literally became a meme at one point that Gypsy Rose had done more in the couple of months that she was released from prison than most people did in their entire lifetime. And it does not stop there because she appeared in the fifth season of The Kardashians talking to Kim about life after lockup. She has also announced that she is going to be releasing a memoir. But it doesn't stop there because whilst I said that Anna is playing into the celebrity side, I feel like, and in fact, I have literal evidence. Gypsy wants to be an influencer. Like Gypsy would love to go on a tripping with Tarte. She wants to be a beauty guru, fashion lifestyle influencer, like TikToker, like, I'm sorry, I don't know what that was. She genuinely wants to be an influencer. She as well has scrubbed her older posts, I guess because, you know, they had Ryan in them. But like her first post that she's kept is her with the famous Hailey Bieber Ear One smoothie. If you didn't know her backstory, you would probably think that she was some sort of like lifestyle influencer that was now sharing her pregnancy journey because that's exactly how she's acting online. So she has 707,000, is that how you say it? Followers on Instagram. She has 10 million, 10 million followers on TikTok and nearly 70,000 followers on, uh, 70,000 subscribers on YouTube. Tube. I don't know what it is about New Zealanders. We, I think some people, other people say it too. I say YouTube, like I chew, I YouTube. Across all of these platforms, she to me is giving influencer. And if I were to has a guess, like the the vibe that I get is that she is trying to prove to brands that she should be an influencer for them, that she has influence, that if she mentions a product, it will get promoted. But instead of me just telling you about it, why not I just show you? Hey everybody. So I want to share something with you guys. So I just started taking a new prenatal vitamin. So this is not a sponsor or partnership or anything. I did purchase these, but I went researching and I realized that what I found was that most prenatal vitamins are not third party tested. So I went looking for a very healthy option because I want only the best for my baby. And I came across this one. It's called Needed. 
So this supposedly has only what you need, nothing you don't. And so I did purchase the prenatal vitamins. I purchased the omega-3. Um, they did come with a, a pa whole package. So I got the prebiotic, uh, the collagen protein, the sleep and relaxation, relaxation support. Um, so this is really nice. Um, and then there is a stress support because who has a lot of stress in their life? This girl. I need that support. So I am going to continue to use this product and keep you guys updated about what I think about it. Thanks. Do you guys see what I mean? If you didn't know who Gypsy Rose was and I just showed you this content, you'd be like, oh, it's a mom influencer. Like think that she is mirroring these influences that she's seen. Probably, you know, the YouTube style that she saw before she went into prison. I don't know if they watched YouTube in prison, but I feel like that really translates to her YouTube videos as well. And I did want to show you a couple of her question and answers from her Q&A, which is the first video that she posted on YouTube because I find it interesting. Hi everyone, thank you for joining my first ever Q&A on YouTube. So I guess I'll just jump right in it. What brands would you want to collaborate with the most on Instagram and TikTok? So I use a lot of beauty products. So I use Rare Beauty for makeup, at least some makeup. Um, I use Self Tanner. So I like to use Lux Unfiltered. Um, and a lot of my pictures that I look a lot tanner than I am right now, um, I use Lux Unfiltered. Uh, sometimes if I want to go a little darker, I use the Lux Unfiltered um, Deep Mousse or um, Self Tanning Cream works wonders it's amazing because i'm one of those people that can't tan easy like even if i go out in the sun i'll burn and then i'll be like pasty all over again so i'm just not one of those people that can get a natural tan that is the very first question that she answers on her very first youtube video like does she really think that that is our most burning question our most like i don't think anyone asked that question i'm not going to lie but i do think that she is trying to show brands <laughs> that she can whilst being controversial boost the numbers like she gave a whole spiel about the self tan but anyway let's move on to another part of this video that <laughs> yes it's very interesting again do you plan on being more present on social media Yes, so currently I am thinking about, or at least trying to get more established in social media um, as being an influencer. So we'll see how it goes for me. Um, I'm very new at this, but I do have a very big platform and, and let's see um, what I do with it. Promote self tanner, I guess. When I found this, I was like, oh, I actually observed correctly. Like when I was doing my little tee hee 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 research for this video, I was like, oh, for once, I'm not yappy, yappy, yapping out my, I'm actually making sense. I actually knew it. And I guess it's kind of obvious, like, yeah, state the obvious. But I think it's a whole nother level for her to say she wants to be an influencer, not an advocate, not an influence, not share her story. She wants to be an influencer. And I think that she uses the advocacy and the change and the platform side to address that side of her story. But I genuinely think that she kind of just wants to like go tripping with tar. Like she wants to be hashtag ad, hashtag gifted, hashtag spawned by whatever self tanner company she was mentioning. Anyway, let's continue. Do you plan on doing any advocacy work? If so, what groups or organizations would you like to work with? So I would like to work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, I feel like after my experience, um, I honestly feel like I really want to give back. Um, it wasn't fair to those kids what my mom did, getting me a wish um, and pretending um, to make me look like a sick child so my mother could get us a free trip to Disney. My first trip to Disney, I was 10 years old. I was a child. I did not know that my mother was taking advantage of this organization and it breaks my heart to know that. So I personally have made a donation to make a wish um, because I feel like there's nothing that I could ever say that will make that right. However, by giving a donation to make a wish made me feel like I was giving that wish back to a child, um, that I was giving back what was taken. So I feel like that is an, an organization, um, a foundation that really, really um, is so at the root of my heart and my being. Um, 
so I would really like to work with them, um, as well as other projects that deal with um, prison reform. Prison reform is another thing that I feel like is very um, close to my heart. Having done eight and a half years in prison, I know what it's like to be a prisoner. Um, I know that inmates are not always treated fairly. Um, I was in, you know, I was guilty of my crime, but there are a lot of other people that are innocent of theirs, and they don't get to have their voices shared enough. So I would really like to shed light on that kind of stuff. Do you have a favorite perfume or scent? So, so I feel like whilst yes, she is willing and open to talk about advocacy and even talk about the things that she shouldn't have done it's very quickly followed up like what's your favorite perfume i do think that that makes sense that she would want to donate to make a wish and i'm not going to question the validity or her reasoning behind wanting to donate i can't help but notice that like the majority of this video is very influencer focused like product focused the kind of way that she wants to go in the direction and then in the middle to end of the video it does kind of touch on advocacy and the things that she wants to focus on giving back towards and using her platform for to me at least it comes across as that's how she got here and now she wants to be an influencer with this platform now as well i do feel like gypsy has also had you know the social media glow up again i'm not here to comment on people's appearances and of course you would want to feel beautiful again but i do feel like there is something to note or or there is something there where with both her and anna they didn't just like go out and get their hair done and start wearing makeup like they both got injectables they've both kind of had a glow up in fashion in what they wear in the kind of lifestyle that they're trying to promote like it's that general influencer lifestyle and look that they're going for it's not just the i'm free and i can look how i want to look that they're going for now i wanted to talk about something that i as a girly pop not from america am not going to be the most well-versed person to discuss but i do think it is important to note because the son of sam law has been brought up with both gypsy and anna if you don't know the son of sam law is designed to keep criminals from profiting from the publicity of their crimes for instance selling their stories to publishers or i don't know for another instance selling it to be a mini series on a big streaming platform anna did initially get paid for inventing anna but due to the son of sam law she actually had to pay that money back from what i could find the record said that she did pay most of it back and with the act series there was a lot of drama and controversy around gypsy being upset because she felt like they were profiting off of her story even though with this law she shouldn't be able to but to me what is really interesting then about both of them going down the influencer route is that they're not profiting off of selling their story they're using the selling and publishing and telling of their story to get a platform and then profit off of that platform by just being themselves. So even though I'm just a girly pop, can't talk about the legal side, I feel like it's incredibly interesting how that has evolved in the 2024 space where now they don't even have to sell their stories. They both have and they both have tried to profit off of their stories in the literal selling and mini seriesing of their stories but now they don't even per se need to because they have profitable platforms they have tiktoks which is profitable in america youtube has adsense they can do brand deals as we saw anna went on dancing with the star that is not publicizing her story that is using the publicity from her story to then get opportunities like going on Dancing with the Stars. Equally and interestingly, Gypsy Rose is releasing a memoir that is coming out on December 10th and is available for pre-order. Now, the interesting thing with the son of Sam Law and her publicizing her story specifically is that a lot of people have a lot of interest in her life that led up to the crime, but she can talk about all of that other stuff and I guess omit the crime i'm not really sure how she's gonna legally work around that because she hasn't released the book yet but 
A lot of her story is not about the crime and in her releasing this memoir is a way to gain traction for her social medias, for her platforms and to continue to be an influencer like she wants to be. It will be interesting to see what she does and does not write about it in this book considering that lore but also considering the fact that both her and Anna have tried to profit off of their crimes. I don't know maybe she has found a work around it. I'm not too sure. The book is not out yet so all of this is but speculation at this point in time. But I guess that just leaves me with the bigger topics and the bigger picture of this is that is this a pipeline that we want to promote? Is this a pipeline that we want to encourage? I think well yes it's really important to give people a platform to share their stories and if they have learned and grown from these stories allow them the space to talk about it but it's hard to say that that's what either of these people have done. Like, obviously, we don't know them. But equally, does committing a crime mean that you should be able to turn that notoriety into being a social media influencer? I understand the intrigue. <laughs> Don't worry, I get it. But it just seems really strange and bizarre. Word of the day, word of the slay is bizarre. That this is even something that people are able to do. That this is something that Gypsy Rose was able to achieve. She was able to go from inmate to influencer. She is pursuing this dream of becoming some sort of influencer that gets to do clothing hauls, talk about you know vitamins maybe do a self tanning brand deal who even knows vlog her life and just act like any other mum influencer online are these the things that we want to encourage are these the people that we want to put on the stage with influencers I feel like in general influencers are not being seen in the best light right now so maybe maybe they fit in question mark maybe the standard for influencer is not trustworthy anyway I don't know but the fact that two people who whilst yes incredibly different backgrounds and life stories and crimes had a very similar set of circumstances had shows released at similar times and had being released from prison at similar times were able to use social media to turn this notoriety into a career. If I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? And when you think about the purpose behind things like the Son of Sam lore and to discourage people from wanting to become notorious from crimes, committing crimes, being a criminal, it seems like this pipeline kind of doesn't align with that it's just like the dominoes cascading in a line in this way is so interesting to me and I need to see up about it with you guys and I need your opinions and perspectives on it because I don't know I would love to know what you think like do you think that this is going to become more of a popular pipeline are we going to keep seeing this happening does this have a knock-on effect to who is this going to even change who can be an influencer because it seems like it doesn't matter how you become famous whether it's going viral for a tweet because you put on a lot of highlighter in your school picture or because the crime that you were a part of became a famous Netflix series like but to me what I think is really interesting is this choice and this decision from both Gypsy and Anna to be influencers it's not to be an influence and I made a video actually about Gypsy asking this question before. I'm like, is she trying to be a good influence or an influencer? And I think to me now that time has passed, it's really clear that they are both trying to be influencers. They're not trying to use this platform to share their story in a positive way, to share what they've learned from it, to make change they're trying to use this platform to in Anna's case become a socialite and chase that dream that she's always had and I guess for Gypsy it's to become an influencer to be famous to be a social media creator and I don't know go on a trip with Todd I guess but to me those are just such very different things is to want to be an influence or be an influencer and I think 
the way that influencers are going lately is not a good way like it's a very selfish way it's a very like your life is very much about yourself when you're an influencer it's about what you like it's about what you recommend it's about what you do like it's a very self obsessed and revolved around way of existing and it's just interesting to me that this is something that both of them have chased after with their platforms but anyway (laughs) I've definitely yapped for way too long so I simply now need to know what you think in the comments down below please let me know but yes thank you guys so much for watching if you stay to the end you are a real one don't forget to like comment and subscribe subscribe. and if you want to keep up with me between my uploads I'm on TikTok and Instagram and I'll link my vlog channel down below but don't you worry guys because I'm not funny there either. Bye!